Hi loves, welcome back to Love What Luck. Hope you've all had a good week. My cup is so full this week, honestly. If you're listening and you're in your 30s, or maybe your late 20s, or basically just feeling like you're getting older, I just think as you grow up, you tend to live alone. We tend to move away from our family and friends, especially in this day and age. Lots of us work from home, so we spend a lot of time by ourselves. And I think it's really easy to get into a routine if you're like me anyway and you enjoy your own company and stuff where you think you don't really need to do much and you almost forget that the simplest things make you happy so me and my friend this week same thing both been a bit down nothing happening really but both kind of on the same vibe and she has moved um like just outside of London now so I was meant to go over last week we both cancelled and even this week when it came to her she was like oh, you know it's far out we don't want to come you don't have to and you know like that type of vibe and I just think as you get older it's very easy to be like oh yeah I need to go home I need to do my dinner I need to do my wash you know just like get into your boring routine anyway I ended up going over, I went for a sleepover and I stayed for two days. I put on my Instagram, I don't know if you saw, you're never too old for a sleepover with your bestie. It was literally like the most (laughs) soul fulfilling thing I've done in weeks. Both of us said it after we were like, I feel so happy after doing that. I just think that as humans, we're not meant to be doing what we're doing I was saying this to my mother the other day like naturally we're meant to be in packs and tribes but currently like in our modern day society uh, like I said we move away from our friends we move away from families we work from home and no complaints because you all know I love working from home but sometimes it's it's just not that good for you I don't think to be by yourself all the time and like not doing stuff that you enjoy or that you used to enjoy And I think sometimes you just forget it. So if you're listening, I encourage you, if you can, to just go and have a sleepover with your bestie. It was so nice. Didn't even do much. We literally just had a takeaway, sat and chilled. We didn't even watch anything, so we were just talking the whole time. But it was so, so nice. And then I went for lunch then when I came home. I literally was only meant to go for a night. I ended up staying for two nights. (laughs) And then went for lunch with my other friend. And yeah, no, you just feel like you've had a really nice few days. I think yeah it's just made me realize how important it is for your overall mood because like I said when nothing's happening that makes you feel down you're just going about your day life be like something isn't quite right then that's the time you need to you know fill up your cup with something whatever you enjoy doing so yeah that's my advice of the week guys never underestimate the power of the simple things and you know that didn't even like cost much like you haven't always got to go and do these mad things you know to to make you feel joy um anyway let's go straight into this week's story I've been married for 10 months and still haven't had sex with my wife so I got married to the girl I met in uni after we dated for a few years she was a virgin and didn't want to have premarital sex I respected that and actually found that very attractive I just have to put a quick feminist pin in there and say that that is great and if you want to keep yourself until marriage all well and good but it shouldn't be less attractive if you've slept with someone, multiple people, before your husband. I just feel like I can't read that sentence without my little, just with that little feminist bone, you know, going, boop. <laughs> right, anyway, I've always loved her as we got along great and really clicked. Anyway, we got married 10 months ago and found out she has, I'm going to butcher this word, vaginismus. That doesn't sound right, sir. Vaginismus. Vaginismus. She, he said, we tried having sex for the first few months. He goes into a lot of detail that I'm not going to read, but basically it's too painful for her. She can't have sex because it's too painful. What's worse is that we don't even try anymore as it is counterproductive for the treatment. Initially, we did fool around a lot when we first got married, even though there was no sex, but now things have gotten worse. The woman has pretty much no libido. Not once in 10 months has she initiated any type of physicality. It's always me trying to convince her to fool around. When we do occasionally fool around, the most I can expect is a make-out and a handjob. 
nothing more. Well, at least she's using her hands, can I just say? Because imagine this woman's got zero libido. Now, one thing is turning her on. Do you really think she wants your penis in her hand? Like, let's actually deep that now. <laughs> when you are not turned on, holding a penis in your hand is really not going to do it for you. So count yourself lucky that you're even getting that, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> she basically doesn't even want me to touch her for the most part. She admitted that she really doesn't have much of a sex drive anymore. I do wonder if maybe after a while, when if you haven't had sex for like a really long time, if the libido does naturally die down, like maybe does your brain just say, it obviously ain't happening for us, Susan. So let's just, let's like kill that like fantasy thing, like almost as a method of survival. Because imagine being crazy horny for 10 months and knowing that you can't have sex that's putting yourself through torture isn't it whereas if you're able to knock off that need and you just think it's not nice anymore I don't want it you're almost like making your life better I think because it's not nice to want something so bad for 10 months is it it's not healthy clearly but obviously it's very unfair because he's not feeling that uh, okay he said it's reached a point where I'm lucky to get any action once or twice a week. Again, <laughs> once or twice a week. It's not doing that bad. Not doing that bad at all, if you ask me. But it is only a hand job. I try quite often, but the excuse is always the same. I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I'm not in the mood. And again, never has she come to me saying she was in the mood to fool around. I swear I feel that if I never approached her, she would be completely happy and content, and content. That is the vibe that I'm getting. But again, this isn't a thing where she's saying, it's very different where like, you don't want sex with somebody and where you actually can't. And if it's really painful for you and it's not pleasant, then like I said, that's got to just knock a switch off in your head, doesn't it? To be like, this isn't going to work. Like, I don't want it. So... Oh, God, this is hard, though, isn't it? Because if this was me in this situation and my boyfriend had, like, penisitis or whatever, I would find that so hard. There's only so much that, you know, do I need to insert the blank? <laughs> the toys and et cetera, et cetera, can do. Like, sometimes sometimes you do just need a penis, you know? Um, <laughs> I'm just going to move on. It is hard. And I also think it's really hard to not take it personally. Like, I think if you... You can be in the most, like, stable relationship. I don't know. I could be wrong. Here, but I think you could be in the most stable relationship. But if if you offer yourself to someone and they say, no, I just think it's always going to feel like a rejection because, like, you love them and you want to sleep with them and you want to be with them. And, yeah, obviously, once I'm tired, fine. But if that's happening, if, like, a couple of times even... You just can't help but take it personal. So 10 months of that, like as much as I'm making out like he's a okay, cake and his hand job twice a week, it, it would be hard, wouldn't it? Like it really would be. It's not that she doesn't love me. She is very much in love with me, but she has no sexual drive in her. She could literally spend her whole life cuddling and that would be sufficient. I am really struggling 10 months into this marriage. I haven't told anyone about our issues due to the sheer embarrassment I feel. I feel like that's not a good attitude to have. You should never be embarrassed about stuff you go through, I don't think. Not like with your friends and stuff, you know. I think obviously we all I think we all feel that with some stuff, like embarrassment or shame and that. But I think, especially what I've learned this year, like the best thing you can do is share stuff with your close friends because it just helps to get off your chest and also it is good to get other people's kind of thoughts on it. Not in the way that they're going to change your mind about stuff, but like he could say to his friend and his friend could be like, oh, mate, me and Sandra only sleep together once a month and she only gives me a blowy on my birthday and I feel like if he heard that he might be a bit more like oh, okay not everyone out there in couples is having mad sex seven times a week you know so sometimes I just think sharing stuff can help um I have made a personal agreement that if our one year anniversary comes around and we still haven't had sex yet he's really hoping for that one year anniversary special 
special bang. Um, I am seriously considering divorce. Oh my God. I don't want to. I do love her. But the bottom line is that she cannot satisfy my sexual needs and is killing me inside. At this point, I feel like even if we were just friends, our relationship would not be that different. I do love her and she is gorgeous. But when it comes to our sex life, it really is non-existent. And she wants to have kids within two years once vaginismus is solved. Oh, I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, which means whatever pathetic sex life we do have will completely go out the window. Okay, so I've got to say, she is having treatment and apparently in two years it's going to get solved. It makes me think that you're not serious about your wedding vows because those vows, when you say them at the altar are in sickness and in health. And I know that not being able to have sex for two years would be hell and torture and would take a massive emotional toll on you. But we're not talking boyfriend-girlfriend here. We're talking marriage. And surely this isn't a forever thing. She's literally getting treatment. So surely if you're married to someone, the thing should be that you talk to them, you talk through your problem... Do you wait it out? This is where I guess blurred see. I think our generation think about marriage differently. Like if this was our parents and grandparents' generation, maybe they'd be having affairs, I'm not saying, but I think they would stay married. Like to get a divorce used to be such a taboo bad thing, didn't it? And it's good that it's not like that now because it means people are not staying in abusive relationships and long lost families all it is on there is people giving their children up for adoption because they add them out of wedlock and stuff and that kills me so i don't long lost families like if you ever need a good good cry just put that on oh what a show i absolutely love it um but anyway it's good obviously that it's not too rigid like that but i do think now people get married and divorce it's not really like a shameful thing, is it? It's still very upsetting, don't get me wrong, like when people go through it. But I just think like it's a lot more normal. So now I just feel like, yeah, considering divorce over this, it's hard. I can see it from the two sides. But imagine you've got the disease or something and then they wanted to leave you. Like this, this is the in sickness and in health that you say in your vows, you know? This is it. This is the test. So to be fair, if he's considering divorce, then he might start to let him go. You know, he's still getting hand jobs, lest we forget. Or maybe have a conversation with her. Maybe she'd be like, do you know what? Sleep with some I don't know. Maybe she'd just be like, sleep with someone else. Like I'm actually not interested. As long as you still love me and you, you know, come back and you, you know, wear condoms. You don't know. Like people deal with things very differently. You don't know what she'll say. I think you should just be handing her divorce papers, you know? Deep down inside, I wanted to be with someone who loved sex, someone with a sense of adventure that would that would enjoy getting freaky. <laughs> I definitely did not find that in this woman. I'm wondering if anyone else out there has been through anything similar. Any advice? Also, what's your opinion? Would I be justified in leaving her? Any feedback would be appreciated. So guys, if you're listening, watching, you can leave a comment on Spotify. And you can leave a comment on YouTube. Let us know what you think. DM me. I'll put it on my Insta story. <laughs> I'm at Sadie Malfi at Love What Luck. I've kind of answered it. I, I don't think it's justified leaving her because it's not a forever problem. It's, she's literally getting treatment for it. So it's not like if I'm with her, I can't have sex for the rest of my life. It's about weather in the storm, you know? Also, it doesn't sound like he's spoken to her at all. It's a lot of stuff I think that he's keeping in his head and he's not speaking to her obviously I can understand that he must be going through it though and it's quite amazing that he hasn't had an affair to be honest unless he has and he hasn't mentioned it but most people I think in this situation would have just gone and slept with someone random I think but you know that's a good thing that he hasn't done that but this is <laughs> you know I always link things to Sex and the City you know when Charlotte meets Trey and she doesn't want to sleep with him because she's going to get married to him and she feels so special and even though she's not a virgin she wants to save herself for him and then the day before the wedding she gets drunk I think it's meant to be like a hen party or whatever anyway 
she goes over to his and they go to have sex and the line is he couldn't get it up and he had erectile dysfunction issues that yeah that's what it's called now yeah and then she's at the altar saying to Carrie like oh my god you like you can't actually have sex and she's like I should have just had sex with him on the first date because honestly this type of stuff if Right, okay, let me backtrack. I think, you know, if you're both religious and you both got the same beliefs about it, fine. But if you really wanted to be with a woman who's freaky and adventurous in the bedroom, how haven't you slept with her before you've married her? Like, if sex is that important to you, you've got to do it before you get married, have now. I think that's crucial. Because, yeah, imagine you go on a date with some somebody and it's all flirty and you're seeing them and then you're with each other this whole time and you get so excited and then you sleep with them and... There's no sexual chemistry there, or it's awful, or yeah, it just doesn't work out. If if you value sex in a relationship, doom, doom, dire, doomsday, horrendous. Right, I listened to a really good podcast this week. I will link it. It's Dr. Tara Swart, which I've mentioned on you before because I found her. I basically find most of these people from Diary of a CEO, like I see a clip and I think, oh, they sound good. And then there's a few of them. There's like a handful of them that I just like absolutely stan. And then I go on this like mad stalking thing of them and I watch all their videos and listen to all their podcasts, right? She's really good. Um, And she was on a podcast. I can't remember what it was called. I haven't heard it before, but I'll link it. Oh, wait, no. This I heard this being spoken on the Mel Robbins one. I'm currently listening to another one that she's on. I put her on this morning like when I go for my morning run which I have to do this morning I had anxiety this morning for the first time in such a long time like I can't honestly the first time in months because in the mornings always when I have it or when I used to have it um but it's gone it's, I must have said it before it's just gone it's such a lovely thing and then I woke up I woke up this morning and I had it and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I was like, you are not coming back into my life, mate. So I thought, right, it forced me really to go for a morning run because I wanted to anyway. But I think if I get out and go for a run, it just kills any anxiety. And then I put like a positive podcast on. So yeah, I'm listening to a new one. But what I want to talk about is when she was on the Mel Robbins one. So easy to find. Um, just type in Mel Robbins, Dr. Tara Swart. I even remember the episode details. It's like the episode name is something like the number one neuro scientist, neuro- neurodivergent. I don't know. You'll find it. Anyway, she was on about trusting your gut. I know it was either last episode or the episode before. I was saying like how much I trust my gut and how I'm just, you know, I, I listen to her wholeheartedly. And she said something really interesting about like the actual science behind it. Like when you say you trust your gut, like it, it actually works and there's actual science in the body and biology, I think. I don't know. There's actual stuff this makes it true and I actually wrote this down because I want I thought it was really good and I didn't want to get the words wrong and butcher but and butcher it which clearly is something that I'm prone to doing so she was talking about intuition and how you should follow it and she said there's a process in the brain called Hebian learning and that's like named after a doctor like somebody Hebian or something and it's basically neurons that fire together, wire together. Now, Joe Dispenza also talks about that. So that is the process of our brains wire to like old behaviors and stuff naturally because it's quicker and it's easier. And it helps us in life to know what we like, what we should do. Like survival is very important. But if over years you've had like bad things that you think about or bad behaviors, then it's very easy for your brain to go back to those. So you need to rewire them to make better decisions, better thoughts, etc. Right? So yeah, she said I work the work in memory part of our brain, that's like always on top of our mind. And then should the things that have become habits and behavior patterns, they've been pushed deeper into the limbic system, center of our, center of our brains. Stick with me, guys. 
she said, we pick up life lessons and wisdom, but we can't remember everything we've experienced, obviously, and learned over our lives. But that learning gets pushed deeper into our brainstem and spinal cord and gut neutrons. So it actually gets pushed down, down inside us. And she said that's what causes the massive connection between our gut and our limbic system, which is where our intuition and wisdom arises from. So all the stuff that we learn and like all our experiences of stuff. So like say every time you've text a guy, he is never text you back. Or say like every time you've asked, asked someone out, they've always said no. That stuff is going to like push down right inside you and like those lessons and it's going to then affect how you, um, how you do things. Obviously, you're probably going to be much more cautious about asking somebody out. In the same way, if you've always gone on dates with people from a certain place or, or that look a certain way and they've always treated you well, then that's like a learning. So, I mean, she didn't say any of this. This is my interpretation of it. But it's like that's your learning and all your experiences. So that's how you know to trust someone. Like, say, I think, like, say someone's done you really wrong. Like, say, you've, obviously, I'm going to relate it to relationships or friendships, whatever. Say somebody has done you wrong and you've learned, like, how that's happened. And, you, and when you end it, you can see all the signs of how that relationship went bad. When you go into the next one, if something triggers in, you can feel it, like, in your gut, like, oh, he's going out again to work and he's not answering his phone for four hours, like, that's what my ex did. Obviously, then, your intuition will be telling you he could be doing the same thing. Obviously, there's much more other stuff, but, yeah, basically, that, like, it's all your learning, so I don't know how I can relate that to the stuff that I've listened to my gut on, but obviously, when I'm making decisions... It's from like stuff I've learned and lived through, you know, and then my gut is telling me like, this is safe, this is okay, this is what you should do. And it's based on stuff that I've actually experienced. I thought it was amazing. Hopefully you understand it, but definitely go and listen to the podcast if you, if you're into it, because yeah, I think like, it's always good, like I said, to speak to people and to get people's opinions. But if you can also like really trust your gut, I think that's such an important, strong skill to have. Like if you know deep down how you feel about something, oh my God, don't you just think that's so empowering? Where everyone can have their opinion on something and you can be like, no, I know that this is what's going to happen. Like I can feel that I'm doing the right thing. I just think that's such a power move. And yeah, I love it. Oh, she also said that when you're stressed and bloated, you can't follow your intuition as easily because you can't make the connection in your gut. So, and she said that stress causes belly fat, which I've heard before on a podcast, which like I won't go into because I'm not, I haven't written that part down. But um, yeah, it's like a whole thing. So when you're stressed and your cortisol spikes and stuff, you can't tap into your intuition as easily because your gut is not there. So basically, you've just got to take care of yourself, mind, body and spirit <laughs> to make good decisions. Okay, I've got another little story off uh, one of you guys. She said, picture this. I caught my partner of 10 years sneaking around with a co-worker who ironically had a partner herself. I just feel like work affairs, I feel like people that have work affairs, nine times out of ten, they've both got the partners. That's my take on it. And they find like a mutual connection, being in work, dealing with the same people and both having partners back home. I just, yeah, it's a classic. To make things juicier, I found out he was also trolling escort sites. Perfect. Not only are you having a work affair, Oh, by the way, if you work with us, she's probably having an emotional connection with you as well. So you're now messing around two girls, not that I've got any sympathy for the affair girl. And you're having escorts, like... It's giving sex addiction. <laughs> uh, right, she said, One night, I spotted him and his colleague in his BMW parked in a dark forest. When I confronted her, she just laughed and said, He's with me now. 
hell to the nor. This is what happens in every single dream you have that your partner's cheating on you. Like, why is it that when you dream your partner's cheating on you, you always find out and then you go and address them and they just go, yeah, and? Like, it's so... <laughs> so much worse there is nothing worse and I just swear like all the cheating dreams are like that I've even had a text before saying oh my god I dreamt that you were pregnant last night and you just told me and it was like matter of fact and you said it was my fault and that was it like it's a <laughs> it's the worst possible reaction you can ever have just imagine like they hurt you so much already like to then have them say blatantly in front of you that they don't care oh my word absolute hell on earth um I know she did that not the guy but I just feel like it's that same vibe also cheeky cow he's with me now oh my god I just want to get the Vaseline on <laughs> what is the I'm thinking of white chicks when she goes bring the Vaseline nay nay bring the Vaseline and the Someone else. These girls are on some other shit. The Vaseline. What is it for? So your hands, because that's going to make your hands slip. I always thought it was to scram people, but if you've got Vaseline, would, would you still be able to scram someone? I don't know. That's going off topic. Either way, what a horrible woman to say that. Like, I'm have. I'm having an affair with your partner. Like, is that not bad enough? So I now have to basically laugh in your face. Horrible. She has zero morals. Uh, okay, she said, in a fit of rage, I called her a few choice names, leading her to report me for assault. Thankfully, there was no evidence, and my ex eventually backed down after his parents intervened. He promised his mother he'd end it with her, finally. Yeah, I also think that. Imagine raising your child, you know, you've raised them to be a good person. And then, I know, and especially like, obviously, when your boyfriend, girlfriend, or in a relationship, you met the family, you know, when the family like you and stuff. So, yeah, I feel like they get really hurt and disappointed as well. I turned to therapy and sports to rebuild my life, working hard and landing a promotion. Well done. But just when I thought I was free, I ran into my ex again. This time with another co-worker. Apparently he couldn't resist juggling multiple girls and escorts. I see it's nice that he's learned his lesson. He's grown from the situation and it's great. Much better off without someone like that, obviously. Um, then, just a couple of weeks ago, I got a Facebook message from a woman who heard my story. Turns out she recently discovered her husband had cheated on her with the same girl who messed with me. My heart goes out to her. They only got married last year. Isn't that crazy? I just, I just don't understand why you always got to be going for taking men. For me, as soon as a guy says he's with someone, it's like, done, done, done deal. I, I've, ex I've literally experienced that. Where I've thought someone's hot and you're talking and you're flirting um. I had before, we were like flirting and stuff, and then he was like, oh, look, I've got a tello. I've got a girlfriend, and it's really nice, being, really nice speaking to you, but, you know, I've got a girlfriend. I was like, oh, my God, wow. Firstly, my first thought was, only now you're telling me, but whatever, you obviously wanted to bring the attention, fine. But I would never, ever be like, well, she's not you. Straight away, it's like a boop, it's like a switch off, and I was like, "Oh, well, thank you for telling me. Fine, completely fine." Like, and then to me, they like they're my bros. Then you know, I didn't stay with them obviously, but like, even if I was still in the group, forever, instantly, then they would just be like, it would just be completely friendly, like not even that. Do you know what I mean? I just they must be for her to be doing that with two guys. One of them's married as well, like sick. For her to be doing that, she's obviously got an issue where she needs the the validation, I think it is, of being able to take a man off a woman. That's what I think it must be. There's probably loads of reasons that you could go to in therapy, but why on earth would you want somebody that has got a partner? Because one it means they are not nice people. And two, don't you think of the girl? I'm like, I will always think of the girl over just some guy that you fancy. Like, come on. Horrible, yeah. I can't understand that. Do you know I was on about um, that I haven't had anxiety for ages, actually? 
Hafen harte, but my night time. Basically, daytime, nor anxious, fine. As I'm sleeping, I spoke to my therapist this week about it. I was hoping she'd give me like some magical answer. She didn't. I've become a, not a teeth grinder, because I don't grind the teeth, but I tense my jaw in my sleep. Why have I suddenly developed this out of nowhere? Out of all the years that I've had anxiety and stress and all the years I've had where I physically couldn't go to sleep, never did it. The last maybe week, two weeks, waking up, my jaw's actually sore. And then I was Googling it, uh, says that it can make your face bigger. Please, I don't want like a baby face fat a big juggler cheeks like it's just not what I signed up for so any tips for that let me know because I'm not going to sleep thinking about anything I literally woke myself up the other night because I bit down on my tongue because I was so hard like I said it's not grinding it's just like tense in my jaw obviously I've googled it I didn't even feel anxious I just googled it and it was like a sign of anxiety and I'm like but I'm not anxious <laughs> why am I tense in my jaw in my sleep so annoying. I was telling my friend about it. She was like, you could wear a mouth guard. I'm like, do I really want to be wearing a mouth guard to sleep? I, I don't, is the answer. I actually don't. Yeah, very strange. So trying to get out of that. I don't know how. But um, but yeah, actually, I think it's tight. Cause I, had, I had nightmares last week as well. Um, so I don't know what's going on with me. I had like the same reoccurring nightmare that somebody was coming into my flat or like looking at me or, you know, basically coming to hurt me. Um, so maybe it's just tied with her. I haven't had an I haven't had it for the last few days. So maybe it was just a phase. I hope so. But I feel like it's very common because people always talk about getting Botox in their jaw. And I'm not gonna lie, I always thought that was a bit of a myth and people just wanted to get Botox and they just said that they were tense in their jaw to like justify it. And then I experienced it this week and I was like, oh my God, but I don't want to get Botox there. But it, I will if it comes to it. Anyway, that's just my little cry for help this week. If you've got any um, tips. Oh my God, I have to give a shout out to Pookie this week. Pookie and Jet. Have you seen this couple? So they, they blew up on TikTok initially for being quite cringe. So it's basically, they like proper American, I don't know where his accent from, but it's, it's an insane American accent. Uh, it's a couple, they've been together years, they're super rich. I think he worked in like finance, right? So they were rich and now they're literally huge on TikTok and stuff, so they're obviously rolling in and now. But they blew up through being, her name's Campbell, his name's Jet, but he calls her Pookie. And they would like film the two of them before going out to dinner or whatever. And she'd be like, uh, so we're going out for dinner tonight. And he's just stood next to her and he goes, Pookie looking stunning tonight. Pookie's got this gorgeous dress on. Pookie looks like a princess. And he would just hype her up. And I feel like when I first heard it, it was like loads of satire around him, like people taking the piss. And I was like, oh my God, cringe. Oh, they pregnant now. They are sweethearts. Everybody needs a jet. He's so lovely. He's so nice to her. He brings her food all the time because she's pregnant. He brings her food in and behind his back, he always has an extra little something like flowers or a special drink or a dessert. And he just absolutely adores her. And I've seen clips of him out that people have taken on the side when they've been in concerts and they love, loved up. I mean, together since they were younger. He, he does speeches for, for her, like how nice she is. She's crying. And oh my God, what's sad about it is if I ever saw Jet, not he's like bad luck anyway, but if, like, if I ever saw him in person, I'd be like, no. Like, <laughs> you just know. But turns out that's exactly what I would want and I think what we all need. He's so, so lovely and now I follow them. I just follow her, obviously. And they keep coming up on my page and every time I see him, I'm like, oh my God, what joy. Like, guys should take a leaf out of Jet's book because he's not, he's just obsessed with her and he just lets her take the limelight and she loves it as well, you know, like she loves him, you can tell. And I just think how nice to be with someone that that just bigs you up like that. Like she's on a photo shoot and obviously she's pregnant. And he's just like, yes, babe, stunning. Oh my God, look at Pookie. 
and he called her Pookie. It's just so cute to sing. Oh my God, I absolutely love it. That's like as close as I can get to a love story for you guys this week because, um, yeah, we haven't had any nice ones. So once again, if you've got any stories to share, to be fair, the drama ones or the nice ones, then uh, please let me know. Send it to Sadie at lovewhatluck.com or DM me. I'm at Sadie Mothby or at lovewhatluck. And also just let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk about. I feel like I, w- I was thinking the other week that when I first started the podcast, I kind of dedicated it to like something. So now like today, what I was thinking about is when I was thinking, oh, I want to talk about um, trusting your gut and stuff. I feel like I used to always do that with an episode, like almost focusing on something. And, and I think along the way, I just did stories. And I feel like, well, this last year, I've just, I don't even know what I've done, spoken about this last year. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I just feel like maybe, maybe is it good to have episodes like dedicated to something? Obviously, I'm still always going to share like what's going on with me. That's a non-negotiable, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, if there is anything in particular that you want to talk about, and I just think it'd be so good if we could get people involved, you know, like interactions. So I know I say all the time, but I really want to start asking questions more on Insta and then like have you guys input so we can share it and chat through it. So yeah, please remember to come follow me, subscribe on YouTube, please follow on Spotify. Please leave me a little five star review if you haven't done that on Spotify. I'm always looking to get the numbers up on that. And yeah, oh, I've got one more random story to finish on. I got on the tube the other day, right? Well, I was already on the tube. My head was down on the phone, engrossed in my own, you know, world, as you do. And I smelt this aroma and I thought, oh my God, that is divine. It smelled so nice. It was a guy's aftershave. And I just thought, when I look up, this guy is bound to be so hot because he smells so attractive to me that I was almost nervous to make eye contact with him because I was like, he's he's probably my soulmate. I was so attracted by his smell. And you know, there's like a massive thing about, I think they're called pheromones and stuff. Like, and now you can, when you can smell your partner and everything, you love all the smell of them. Like even when they sweat in and stuff. I looked up, so not my type. Couldn't be further from my type. I was so shocked. I was like, wow, I'm not even attracted to you in the slightest. But the scent, I've never experienced anything like it can't even remember what the guy looks like now he wasn't like bad looking or anything but obviously I was expecting to look up and you know him be looking back at me (laughs) waiting no it was just a it was just like any other tube encounter so I guess I just liked his perfume but it was a very intense thing I feel like if I went on like love is blind like love is scentless or I don't know no that doesn't work (laughs) <laughs> whatever love is blind is but basically where you just smell them oh yeah so you'd be blindfolded wherever but you just smell them I would have made the wrong decision or would I have maybe that guy was my soulmate but I just never gave him a chance imagine I tapped him like hi I know we're obviously not each other's types I could just tell but you smell nice to me and I feel like we should explore that <laughs> imagine Uh, but yeah very interesting um okay now i'm gonna wrap it up please um send me a story guys as i said but thank you so much for listening and watching and i'll speak to you next week